It's too bad this isn't a list about Natalie Dormer's best appearances, ever since you know very well that Game of Thrones would make the cut and possibly be near the top. But all in all she's proven to be a very astute actress, and while she's been more of a support to other actors, she's also been a very key part of many movies that she's been in. But to be honest sometimes her bit parts are more entertaining than her overall big roles, since she puts so much into them that they become those moments you remember the most, and it then becomes a treat to see her show up again in another show or movie. Natalie has been a real delight for a while now, and while her Game of Thrones appearance isn't classified as being in a movie, you can honestly claim that a lot of people happen to remember her fondly in such a role, even if it didn't end up lasting as long as we'd hoped. Here are a few of her best movies thus far. Number 5. Captain America. The First Avenger. I, uh... Right about what you did. Oh, the, yeah. Natalie gets to be a bit naughty in this movie, since she's playing a female soldier that can't really keep her hands to herself when it comes to Captain America. What's funny is that while he already thinks that his real love interest, Peggy Carter, is canoodling with Howard Stark, a man that Cap can't stand, Peggy is in fact attracted to Cap. That kind of fades away just a bit when she sees Cap in the corner supposedly making out with a woman he doesn't even know. It doesn't help that she's just as pretty and definitely very forward, but shooting at Cap to test the durability of the shield he picks is a bit overkill. It does get her point across though. Number 4. The Hunger Games. McKing J Part 1. We all fled on our own. For this. For you. Even revolutionaries need a media team, and Cressida and her group know how dangerous the mission will be, but still find it necessary to remain determined and steadfast in their manner as they attempt to chronicle Katniss's advance on the capital to confront Snow. It almost seems vulgar and kind of nonsensical to do this, but at the same time, if one doesn't document history in the making as it's happening, there are a lot of things that can go wrong, be assumed later on, and be turned around so that they might be used in a different, less than desired manner so it is necessary, unfortunately. Number 3. The Counselor. Yes, we do. We have them in silk and in nylon. This is one messed up movie, and it only gets worse as it goes along. Fassbender plays a cartel lawyer that decides to get in on a deal and instantly regrets it when the whole thing goes sideways. Not only is his business partner set up and killed, but everyone that had something to do with it is made to pay, including his fiance. Natalie's part in this movie is a small one to be certain, but that seems a small blessing, since anyone that really has anything to do with this movie, apart from Cameron Diaz's character, ends up getting seriously messed up by the end. In terms of being one of the most violent and yet most unnerving movies around, this definitely gets a nod. Number 2. Rush. We all thought you'd been in an accident. I have. If you call a friendly disagreement with another driver an accident. Once again she's more of a small player in this movie, but her presence is still noted since she is there to begin with. Taking care of men that put their lives on the line for the sake of a sport is something that medical personnel likely see as troublesome at times, but perhaps routine at others, since at this point, a lot of them have likely seen a great many things in their time. This movie was different in that the athletes were very different men, and their appetites were just as varied, as Hunt was there to enjoy life and everything that he could wring out of it, while Lotta was all about the race. Number 1. The Forest. Two minutes ago, we were walking that way, and now you're leading me back the way we came. No, Sarah. We're following the river down. Remember? The legend of the Akigahara Forest is something that many people in Japan would likely tell you about if they knew anything about it, and many do. But as you can guess the movie plays up the terror that grips this place quite a bit, and compasses do work just fine in the forest. But when Sarah goes in search of her twin sister Jess, she does what many people in a horror movie tend to do, she disregards the safety and the warnings and goes her own way. Plus, staying in a place that's dubbed the suicide forest after dark doesn't seem like the best idea since, even if the place isn't as haunted as the legends say, it's still not wise to tempt fate. It'd be nice to see her in other films with a bigger role, 